yeah that's really gonna tie up all the relay board and all the wiring that's up front which is pretty satisfying it's kind of nice to say that out loud what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel so today as you can see behind me it's kind of a crappy day here in florida it's raining a little bit not gonna do too much but we're gonna go ahead and tinker on the camaro now you saw in our last video we got our precision fabrication wiring uh, relay board switch panel and harness kit from them um, i still think that's probably one of the best options you can do if you're a do-it-yourselfer or even if you're a shop um, this is really going to be strictly for the the do-it-yourself kind of at-home type wiring job just because you can't really compare it to a shop because if they're going to have all these spools of wires all the connectors all the crimpers all the tools to do the job already they've probably already spent thousands of dollars in that stuff whereas we're not going to spend thousands of dollars to get everything that they already have because we're only wiring one car at the time so we got a few more things in uh, recently, so we'll go ahead and jump into that and I'll show you guys what we got. Go ahead and start over here. And this is from Current Performance and Wiring. Now we got our injector harness. We did not opt to get the Holly harness. Um, I didn't really like how it was loomed and whatnot. So we kind of got everything on the same loom, which is that kind of that Alex Tech stuff. And it seems like, well, I guess Holly uses it too. But it just seemed like really good quality. All the wires and colors are, um, they're matched up to Holly for their uh, inputs and outputs on the, on the connector here. So it's really nice of them. And they're staggered. I don't know if you guys can see that. So you got the, the first four cylinders and then you got the next four cylinders. So it kind of leaves it a nice little bridge in the middle. That way you can route um, your wires a little bit cleaner. And then here is our um, alternator flex fuel power tap. Now, Holly has a power tap connector on the ECU harness. Now, I believe this is where we will get our signal for our flex fuel right here. What you guys saw, we're running the Motion Braceworks flex fuel sensor bracket. So this will go to the flex fuel sensor. This goes to our four pin alternator, which is only one wire coming out of it, but this goes to the alternator and this is the excite wire for the alternator. So, and then this will obviously go back to the Holly and here's our flex fuel output that will go to the Holly as well. So we will be able to control the alternator and the flex fuel sensor with the ECU um, rather than trying to externally excite it with a switch or what have you. So thought this was really nice. It turns out to be pretty good quality stuff. <clears throat> compared to uh, some of the bigger name brands and whatnot so really happy with that and again that is current performance wiring they got a bunch of wires a bunch of harnesses and sub harnesses and things like that so went ahead and got a i guess they call it kowitz this is a amp meter well it measures more than amps but we specifically got it for a amp meter so we can measure our amperage draw on all of our systems that way we can go to our relay board and specifically put our uh, fuses in there correctly so here we have our main power harness for the holly dominator the ecu so we'll be routing that today along with all of our power wires that you guys have already seen and um here we got a nice deutsch connector kit this is from iwiss and so far i've been kind of just messing around with some of these and we already have a few of them pinned up these work very well I mean, all the connections are super nice. These are solid contacts. These are not the open barrel contacts. So anytime I feel like I can get a solid contact, they are much better. Um, in my opinion, I think these are stronger. And I also think these have better uh, longevity, I guess you could say. Because Deutsch connectors, you are, you know, obviously meant to plug them in and out a whole bunch of times. So that's that. Actually, let's go show you. Got a few of them. Like I said, already crimped up. So right here, I was just messing around. This is intercooler pump. So we've got from our Davies Craig pump, we got our nice Deutsch connector. And I mean, like I said, super simple. There's a couple videos on YouTube, how to do it. And obviously we will be running a 10 gauge wire to this. Not necessary for this pump, but that's what the kit came with. So we're going to use 10 gauge down to this 14 gauge, the connector, and then a ground. 
and then uh, we got our fuel pump and fans wired. Uh, what else is up there? So we got our fans and water pump wired on the Deutsch connector side, I should say. So I'll go ahead and show you that. So again, you might be asking why are we using a three pin connector on the water pump? Now, one thing I did not account for is these pins have a max amp draw. The water pump is rated for 20 amps. Uh, max, max amperage would be 20 amps. These solid contacts can only take 13 amps. So what I had to do was split the single wire from the water pump into two smaller 14 gauge wires, into two contacts up here, and then one ground obviously. So when we go to wire this up, I'll have to take the 10 gauge, split it to two 14s, on this side of the connector right here and this is a little bit of representation so we've got our wire it's already split out we'll put our single 10 gauge in here connect it up and it's good to go so that will increase our amp draw from our max amp rating i should say from 13 to 26. so we'll be covered on that the fans are good i actually tested these on the fans tested this on the fans and our startup amp draw was I think 12, 12 amps to get them running. Continuous, it's like three or four. So we're solid there, we're really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's not a big deal, but um, just keep that in mind if you're going to be using Deutsch connectors, because I did not know that and I found out the hard way. So along with their kit, this is their style uh, closed barrel contact uh, crimpers and they actually work very well. I'm actually pretty impressed with these. So this is just the same style as the uh, I forgot what those uh, crimps are called. I'm sure you've seen them before. They're like a mil spec type crimper. I think called Dave's Crimpers. Davies Crimpers, something like that. Either way, and then we got some open barrel uh, contact crimpers for like the holly connectors and whatnot. So IWSS for this and the kit. Like I said, the kit, I think it's pretty nice. I have no complaints about it so far, So, but we'll see. And uh, over here, we got some, these are these terminal connectors uninsulated butt connectors and we got different sizes for different wires and whatnot so all these are from Dell City all right so we didn't really want to skimp out on the connection side of things we want to have good contacts and good connections that way we have less electrical issues down the road and we have our terminals these are our ring terminals we use just various sizes that we have four gauge two gauge all that good stuff and these I think you guys might enjoy. So as you can see, these are magnetic. Right? These are little posts, right? So, I mean, and they're strong too. So you put it on something and then you put your zip tie through it. Try and do this one handed. And then you can zip tie whatever. I mean, and the force it takes to pull these off is quite a lot, quite a lot more than you think. I think these are rated for 15 pounds. So they work pretty well. And that's really all we got, guys. So that's that's the gist of it. Oh, sorry. Here's our heat shrink tubing. This is from Amazon. This is glue lined, three to one ratio uh, heat shrink tubing, and it actually works very very well. Again, very impressed with some of the stuff that we've gotten so far. I know sometimes getting stuff on Amazon can be a little tricky and scary, but we've had good luck with this stuff, and yeah, no complaints there at all. All right, now for the exciting portion. This is our relay board. This is our street trip uh, leash electronics relay board. And here is the precision fabrication and wiring harness. Now, we did not touch any of this. The only thing I touched here was last night was this. I cut these zip ties, that way I can run the, the rear wires, right? So these are rear lights. I can run these to the rear and the front lights I can run it to the front. So the only thing I did was separate these two, which is a few zip ties that were already zip tied up. Um, kind of looked like this before, but I'll have to run them like this, and then the front's obviously to the front. So here's all of our relay outputs. All of our wires are connected, they're tight, which is really cool, really nice. And all of these are, you know, obviously ignition, our hot outs, trans brake stuff, um, lights more lights i mean it's 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 all there so the only thing i would recommend if you guys do get this kit which i do suggest if you're going to be doing this at your home you know at home 
not paying somebody to do it. If you get this kit, you have to take all of these screws out. So this type of connector, it's a split fork connector, but it has that little recess for a screw in it. So you can't just pull the screw up, push it in and put it down. You have to actually take the screw out, feed the wire through there, and then put the screw through the, the connector. So that's the only thing that's kind of a pain. That's why I did it all outside of the car. So now I can go take this and go put it inside the car and uh, start running some wires. All right, quick update you guys. We got the Holly main harness ran and um, we got the board back installed with all the wiring attached to the board. So we got our power strap, our ground strap on that. So I'll go ahead and show you that here in a second. Um, but yeah, so starting with the uh, Holly main harness. So just got it routed down here. And um, I took the loom off of it and I wrapped it, I twisted it, as you can see, just so it kind of stays together. And what I did is um, I had to make second holes for these, uh, one, one more ground and one more power for the alternator and for the chassis ground in the uh, Taylor box here. But all I do is take these back off and grind a little bit more just so the main power and ground wires feed in there because so that'll, direct, that'll connect directly to the battery like Holly states very clearly. And then we'll run it down here. I didn't want to loom this just yet because one, the loom that came with it is super thick. Um, but also we have to run this whole mess here. And then two of these actually have to go to the back. So we have our intercooler pump power from the relay board. And then we have our fuel pump power from the relay board. So two of those main power harnesses will go all the way to the back to those two components. So I got to unfortunately um, cut this harness up a little bit as in the zip ties off. I'm going to flip those around that way I can route them a little bit easier straight back to the car instead of going up and toward the front of the car. And um, yeah, so hopefully that'll clean it up just a little bit. But uh, here's the panel in the car. So on the bottom we have our lights here. This is our main main powers here and then our main inputs um, outputs for trans brake and lights ignition 12 volt stuff like that got our little ground block here get that wire out of the way so we got our ground block here um, we just got this just so we have some extra space for grounding if we have to so we got a nice little strap from here still got to clean that up a little bit and then it goes directly to that to the relay board and then obviously we are tapping off of our starter alternator power or sorry starter power wire which is the one that runs all the way back to the battery or from the kill switch sorry and then that'll go that'll power the board so and this is for the um the switch panel so switch panel is done i got everything wrapped up as you can see well maybe not but either way switch panel is in there it's done and um it's all wired up so switch panel is done we got to run lights to the back, two of those power harnesses, the, the main relay harnesses, the power wires, run those all the way to the back. And then we can terminate our uh, fuel pump and our intercooler pump. That'll be two things done off the list, um, minus the five volt signal from the fuel pump. But I'll get into that more later. I have a, I have a good idea to wire that up. But yeah, I mean, it's coming along. It's a hot day, it's very humid today, so it kind of sucks. But that's Florida, so yeah, uh, we're just trucking along and we'll keep you updated as we go. All right, you guys, might look like, uh, well actually this, this part looks pretty clean. So like I was saying earlier, um, most of the relay output, the output powers will you know go up to the front of the car. So that's where all this mess is, don't pay attention to that. But the two that had to go to the back of the car, um, I just ran them underneath. Cut a little train in our little uh, plate here. Uh, let's see, this yellow wire is going to go to the fuel pump for the variable speed. So this is our, uh, what was this? This is for our boost controller uh, activation. So we'll flip a switch, the boost controller will come on, triggered by the ECU. Um, it will also ramp up the fuel pump to 100%. So this is only required for five volts for the fuel pump side. Um, but you can put 12 to it. So now, as soon as we hit boost controller, now we have our 100% fuel pump. So I figured that was probably a safe thing to do. Um, I was originally gonna put it on the data logger, but since if we're gonna run a boost controller, 
I'd rather have the boost controller on with the fuel pump on versus have the boost controller on and for whatever reason the data logger does not come on and then now we just run a bunch of boosts with not enough fuel blow things up not fun so that was my theory behind that so that's this yellow wire right here our rear light section is going out still a few zip ties i got to trim up and whatnot but i think it came out pretty good so far so really all of this right here is done we're not we don't need to touch any of that anymore so all the inputs and outputs are, are logged our grounds are good or at least for the board power is good for the board um, now it's a tedious part of running all the wire as you can see so coming straight out of that board like i just showed you the little cutout that i had that is this loom right here now we'll have to probably you know zip tie it together with all the other ones but Ran it up there, had our split for our power and ground for the, the ECU. That goes straight to the battery, and it goes up here. Kind of hard to show you guys, but goes up to the back. And then I ran it across to the driver's side, if it'll focus. So I ran it over here, and we got our taillight harness, our fuel pump signal wire, the yellow, the uh, red wire, our, our power, is going through here right now. And as you can see right there, there's our first connection. So this is for the intercooler pump. So Deutsch connect up. So I had two main wires coming through here, two of the reds, um, two of the relay output powers. So, you know, this is our first, uh, first connection. This is our first thing. So technically, if we had a battery in the car, I could flip the switch and the intercooler pump would come on, which is pretty satisfying. It's kind of nice to say that out loud. So fuel pump will be next. I'm waiting on a Deutsch connector for the 10 gauge wire. I didn't want to step that up to, you know, two or three wires at 14 gauge to get the correct amp draw. So we're waiting on that, not a big deal. Um, also waiting on some things for the front of the car. We don't necessarily want to dive into the engine side of it just yet. We saw some fabrication to do. I'd rather get the fabrication done, then wire it, and that'll be it. So it is currently the next day, and we continue doing a little bit of wiring today. We got our NOS solid state relay for our trans brake and bump box here. Um, we'll start at the bottom. So this is for the front headlights, um, just like these were for the rear right here. These are for the front. And all I did was tuck them all the way up, and they're actually zip tied behind this harness right here so you can kind of hardly see them and all of these all of the main inputs we had to change um as you remember they went down so that's just a configuration configuration they came in so all i had to do is cut all these zip ties and uh basically just bend them the other way and that way it follows up and uh goes up to where everything we want so that's pretty much a wrap on the board i had to take the solid state and got it um, terminaled up on one of our outputs for the trans brake right here. So this is the main, I guess you call it the main power wire for the solid state. We have our PWM wire, which is going to the ECU. So that's going up. And then this one, the blue one will go to the, um, it'll go to the trans brake solenoid itself. So yeah, that's really going to tie up all the relay board and all the wiring that's up front just like that so we shouldn't have to add anything else and if we do um kind of add it just like that we'll just drill another hole put a piece of hardware with whatever we want right there and we're good to go so even though i had to reroute some of these and all of those um i still think that this kit is probably one of the best things you can do if like i was saying if you're going to be doing it yourself so I mean, you'd obviously you don't have to, but I would definitely suggest it. So I'm probably five or six hours deep into this right now. And I've got the entire rear of the car done pretty much. And then all the front stuff is just laying over here behind me like a big mess. So yeah, we'll clean that up later. But board side done, which is pretty awesome. I'm pretty stoked at how, uh, how clean it looks and how everything, you know, looks just nice and tidy. So Definitely wanted that, that wow factor and that clean look. And um, yeah, I think this is pretty much hard to beat. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So that's going to do it for this episode, you guys. That's probably all the wiring we're going to do so far. 
like I was saying earlier, we don't wanna do the engine side stuff until we're done with our fabrication. So we gotta redo portion of the hot side or cold side, uh, need our intake manifold and stuff like that. So once we get that done, then we can worry about the front side of the harness. Rear side is pretty much done. I'm waiting on a Deutsch connector for that. And obviously the taillights, but it's not a big deal. But the majority of the wiring is actually already done um, for the body side, I should say. Not the ECU um, or the inputs or outputs for the ECU, but uh, that's neither here nor there. It's probably be probably at least another week of wiring, I would say. I'm only really on day one, so I think we've got some good progress. And I uh, feel like the better start you get with wiring, the better off your wiring will be in the long run. So why well, do it once, why well, do it correct? That way there's less headache and a bunch of wiring mishaps and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys found this video um, pretty interesting and also inf informational. I know I've been doing a lot of research and looking at other people's setups and whatnot. And that's what drove us to get this kit from the Precision Fabrication Wiring with the leash board, the race wire solutions, uh, switch panel, and obviously their harness. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, drop us down a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Help your boys out, stay motivated, keep pumping these videos up for you guys. I really hope you enjoy it. So like always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for subscribing. We'll see you in the next episode.